Hello and welcome to Murphy's Garden and you join us today at the Chelsea Flower Show. So Olivia and I have made it down to London and we'll take you around the show and show you all the beautiful things there are to see. It's so exciting to come to the world's biggest and best flower show and it's brimming with thousands of ideas that we can use to give us amateur gardeners lots of inspiration for our own gardens. But don't worry if you can't make it to London every year in person because you can come with us and check out what there is to see. Firstly, we'll head down Main Avenue and begin with some of the show gardens. There's already lots of coverage about the meanings behind lots of the gardens and more detailed accounts of the planting, but I'm simply going to show you what we saw and anything that particularly caught our eye and grabbed our attention. Perhaps unsurprisingly, winner of the People's Choice Garden was the Myloma Garden by one of my favourite designers, Chris Beardshaw. This is a garden which is unapologetically a beautiful garden with immersive planting and allows for a quiet reflection and contemplation. And we saw the man himself with um, Arad Anderson being interviewed for the BBC coverage, which is right, why it's rather busy. Um, something we'd never seen before was this buckeye tree, which is a smaller version, I believe, of a horse chestnut, Ohio buckeye. Um, so that looked quite interesting and perhaps needs further investigation. It was a lovely tree. And we continued around more of the show gardens and most of the gardens seen at Chelsea depict this very loose style of planting, whereby planting is quite fluid with lots of movement using grasses, mixed in with flowers, which I absolutely love this style. A garden that we absolutely loved and was quite different from the others was the Nurture Landscape Garden by Sarah Price. Its inspiration came from the paintings of artist and gardener Cedric Morris and aims to capture the spirit of his garden at his home in Benton End. The muted colour palette and planting uses predominantly his famous large collection of Benton irises, which he bred at his home. It gives a sultry, soft look like that of a watercolour canvas. This garden also photographed extremely well and looks stunning in the photographs that we took. The next garden is a very colourful garden and it is a tribute to the UK's hundreds of community gardening groups where people from all walks of life and all backgrounds can share in their love of gardening together. The next garden has been designed for the charity The Samaritans and celebrates 70 years of listening and helping people through their darkest hours. The planting uses panels of concrete and spiny spiky plants such as eryngiums and roses in dark colours giving a feeling of foreboding but as you move through the garden it opens up into a welcoming sanctuary full of softer plants such as grasses and geraniums and gives a feeling of harmony and restfulness. There has been some controversy at this year's Chelsea Flower Show as several of the show gardens feature gardens which promote weeds and the raw and natural beauty of landscapes such as those seen at Brian Fields sites but it is debatable as to whether or not this constitutes a garden. Personally, I love the loose planting style seen in many of the gardens and the message that we all need to be a little bit more relaxed in our gardens, allowing a few weeds in and for looser, wilder planting and to work as one with nature and not against it. But I don't subscribe to the do nothing approach and giving nature a free rein. I believe that there is a balance to be struck that promotes good horticultural practices and that it is very possible to have a garden that you absolutely love and that wildlife loves too and there really doesn't have to be a compromise of one or the other. But perhaps this is a hot topic that requires further discussion in another future video. We saw many beautiful gardens, too many to mention each and every one. But the next garden we were keen to visit was the new Horatio's Garden, a project close to Olivia's heart, as during her gap year she volunteered and worked at the Horatio's Garden in Shropshire, which, which was designed by Bunny Guinness. Liv saw firsthand the huge benefit this charity has had on the lives of those affected by spinal injury. Olivia spoke to Olivia Chapel, founder of the charity, and we were invited into the garden for a closer look. We met Charlotte Harris, one of the designers from Harris Bug Studio, who designed this garden, which is destined to be relocated at the Spinal Ward in Sheffield. Charlotte very kindly gave Olivia some very welcome career advice when we met her two years ago at her debut gold medal winning Chelsea Garden. And she put her in touch with some of the graduates that were working at Harris Bug so that Olivia could ask them lots of questions about landscape architecture as a career. 
It was therefore wonderful to chat to Charlotte again and thank her for her great advice as Olivia is thoroughly enjoying her course. Incidentally, the garden was beautiful and takes inspiration from the Sheffield area, including a water feature which uses cutlery casts, a nod to the Sheffield steel industry. One of the sanctuary gardens located on Royal Hospital Way called the London Square Community Garden is one really worth highlighting as it is great in the way the long thin space has been divided up so cleverly to create different zones. I heard several people comment that they were going to try and take inspiration to do something similar in their own gardens. There are two dis distinct zones, one a meeting space under a pergola with an outdoor kitchen and a large communal table with board games and recycled chairs. There's also a quiet, peaceful, beautifully planted area with a swing seat in dapple shade to relax in or read a book from the garden library. The garden is also awash with scent coming from jasmine, rosemary, thyme and salvias. Next we headed down the tree-lined serpentine walk, passing the infamous RHS sign and posed along with everyone else for a photo. The serpentine walk is the setting for the balcony and container gardens. Recognising that not everyone has a garden and many people have very limited access to outdoor spaces or even to soil. The designers in this category demonstrate so cleverly how even the smallest of spaces can have a big impact and contribution both in the wildlife the area supports but also in the positive impact a small space can have on the owner's physical and mental health. All of these gardens were very, very different from each other, but the ideas are bountiful, some using everyday upcycled objects as plant containers. Most show that by using large, perhaps seemingly oversized plants and even trees, the small space counterintuitively seems bigger and provides seclusion and privacy. I hope that anyone watching will be inspired by these very clever gardens and I was amazed at what they achieved. The availability of lightweight containers now makes balcony gardening a reality and the use of mirrors to make the space seem bigger is a good trick too and perhaps considering drought tolerant plants makes the upkeep less onerous for those with a busy lifestyle. We headed down Eastern Avenue to see all the trade stands, many of which are every bit as stunning as any of the gardens. From beautiful furniture and textiles, we just loved some of the botanical patterns and the very generous and sumptuous sofas by a company called Sofas and Stuff. We loved some of these prints. This one particularly was absolutely beautiful. We then looked at some of the very pretty and reasonably priced bedding and throws by a company called Forever England. Some of these would be absolutely beautiful in any bedroom. It was busy but we continued on down Eastern Avenue and there was so much to see. There are ceramics, this is a lovely um, selling mugs and things and then this is a lovely company called um, Botanical Ceramic by Louise Condon who we chatted to at the Tatton Flower Show last year and Olivia bought a small and very sweet little bug vase but some of her artwork is absolutely beautiful. There are also various societies and garden magazines, artists, um, clothing and everything you could possibly think of relating to either plants or gardening but some of the stands are just stunning as you can see here. Fortunately for my bank balance we were travelling back by train so we couldn't buy anything as we'd have to carry it all the way home so that was quite good and um, disciplined me not to buy anything. Next we will head into the Grand Marquee and this is where we can see specialist growers demonstrating their perfect plants and the chance to discover new cultivars. It was good to see that Thompson & Morgan, a company who have supported my channel and featured several of my videos in their blog, won the top three places in the much coveted RHS Plant of the Year. First prize went to Agapanthus Blackjack which features striking black flower heads that open to reveal deep purple striped blooms. Over time, the flowers fade but develop a metallic sheen that glow in the late afternoon sun. This variety produces more flowers and blooms twice as long as other varieties. Second prize went to Hydrangea serrata euphoria, which delivers an explosion of colour from the moment the leaves emerge. 
in the spring until it finishes flowering in the autumn with exceptional tri-colour foliage and stunning pink lace cap flowers. This hydrangea won't disappoint, perfectly suited to smaller gardens as it reaches about 80 centimetres in height. Third prize went to Wygelia Camouflage, a compact deciduous shrub, perfect for containers and smaller gardens, reaching just 60 centimetres and which has a long season of interest and is also great for attracting pollinators. And other nominees are the um, David Austin rose, the new one called Rosa Danahue. This is a beautiful rose and we'll see a bit more of this on the David Austin stand when we get to that. And here are some other plants which I find particularly interesting. This is a nice one. This is a new echinacea which has been bred to overwinter well in wet clay soil. It has these long lasting rose pink blooms and a prominent golden comb. I think this one is definitely one to look out for, especially if you are on clay. It's absolutely beautiful and has this nice shimmer to the petals. I love a salvia and this new variety is remarkable in that it repeat flowers all summer long and, and has excellent overwinter hardiness. Its sterile purple flowers attract a wide number of bee species too. What's not to like? This is interesting, a sunflower. This is a hybridization between a dwarf branched yellow sunflower and tall red sunflowers, creating the world's first compact, well branching sunflower. Really like this. I'm not so keen on very, very tall sunflowers, but I do like the flower head. So this is one to look out for too. A lovely new lavender with pretty white flowers on long stems and flowers from April right the way through to the first frost. It has this lovely silvery foliage which is retained all winter, making it great for pots, borders or as a hedge. Most of these plants have a long season of interest and this Tradescanthia flowers from June right the way through to November, longer than most Tradescanthias, with masses of magenta purple blooms and golden anthers that stand out against the petals. If you like wallflowers, then look out for this highly fragrant new series of wallflowers, which flowers from February right through to late summer and is hardy and attractive to bees. And winner of product of the year was this Lindum wildflower turf, which we saw growing on some quite a few of the stands actually, and it's absolutely beautiful mix of different wildflowers and um, definitely worth looking into if you're thinking of introducing this type of planting into your garden. We continued on through the marquee and this is Claire Austin's hardy plants, some beautiful plants here. This is little GM called Lemon Drops at the front and a peony behind it. Um, and we also saw this rather interesting um, Alcamilla mollus which has a very striped leaf. And so it's worth checking out her website if you're interested in any of these plants. She's got some lovely plants. And I did read somewhere that David Austin Senior, when he started the rose business bre breeding of um, the roses. He wasn't sure how successful it would be. And so he grew hardy perennials alongside and Claire Austin, his daughter, now runs this side of the business very successfully. And speaking of David Austin, here is the stunning, as always, David Austin gold winning stand. Um, lots to see here. Some absolutely beautiful roses. And I love David Austin roses and they seem to do remarkably well in our sandy soil. So. Um, the classic is the Olivia Rose, which we, which is here, and Olivia Rose just performs all summer. It's fantastic. You never have any problems with it. No black spot. It's just a real doer. Here it is here. And um, this is the Desdemona Rose, which we have growing in the parterre, and another one that just does well. And we don't seem to have any problems with pests and diseases. It, they just seem to perform. And this is the new one. This is the Danahue. Um, rose introduced for this year 2023 and so many other ones Emily Bronte is another lovely one that we saw so take your pick there's plenty to choose from on the David Austin stand some lovely colours lovely soft gentle pastel colours and um, plenty to choose from for every location And another rose stand, this one, Peter Beale Roses. Some lovely colours, some quite vibrant colours and uh, mixed in with the classics. This is um, Rambling Rector growing over this archway. Doesn't this look beautiful? The display of the roses was stunning on this stand. He's got it growing around this font. 
This is also rambling rector with Nozomi rambler or up the top. The pink one is the is this one here. So yeah, absolutely lovely stand also, and plenty more stands and gardens to see. And this one, that's a lovely um, dahlia, and in front of that is the rigoron profusion. Um, some beautiful planting and interesting to see over here is this is um, Circus canadensis eternal flame this one plant of the year um, not last year the year before when we went to the autumn Chelsea this is a stunning plant really one worth looking into if you're looking for colour and drama in the autumn months this is a beautiful stand really really well set out and I really like the way they've used um, art to um, pick out the colours in the planting. So we've got these lupins of red and gold and that's just mirrored in the, in the piece of artwork too. And this is a stand which um, tributes the heroines of horticulture. So all those figures such as Beth Chatto and Vita Sackville West amongst others and Gertrude Jekyll who pioneered gardening for women. And this plant, this stand is all planted out by botanic nurseries and there's some beautiful gorgeous planting and it was planted I, I believe by um, Pollyanna Wilkinson and this is her characteristic style of planting. This is a quite an unusual pittosporum, um, astrantias, um, lovely lots of grasses um, and geraniums. Um, just look at this, this is beautiful. So we've got foxgloves, we've got lupins, we've got um, alliums, um, geums so much to see um, and it's all held in with this um, woven structure and here is a cornus cusa this is stunning and definitely one that I want to get for our new area back home definitely looking at this um, I don't know what variety it is it might be cornus cusa china girl is a really good um, cornus a uh, flowering cornus to, to look at so yeah I really like this multi-stem look so definitely want one of those and the planting is just beautiful. Look, so much to see. And here are some camassias there that like our um, camassias let lineae, white, white ones, alba. And it's very soft planting. And um, we recognized this as Pollyanna's work straight away without even knowing it was her because she's got quite a distinctive style and one which we really, really love. And here in the Grand Pavilion, they've started a new thing where they have small independent nurseries that all form one bigger group. So on plant stand 40, we had Pine View plants, Daisy Roots, Swallowfields Nursery, Miles Japanese Maples and um, Fleur de Lis and the No Name Nursery and Plant Base, all of them displaying their individual specialities of plants. So that was a really nice thing to see and all those nurseries working together um, and exhibiting at Chelsea. And this area of the Grand Marquis is dedicated to floristry and floral design and some of the structures are just incredible. I don't know how they um, keep these displays looking good all week because we obviously came on Friday and they've been here since Monday so I guess they must have to keep replacing the flowers I'm not sure um, but they certainly look amazing. As we headed out of the Grand Marquis we passed this cute little stand selling macaroons. Interestingly I visited a stand called Norfield Nurseries based in Berkshire and they specialise in Japanese maples I spoke to the man, as I said, I really want to grow maples, but they struggle in our garden due to the wind. He said, wind for maples isn't a big problem, it's watering. You must make sure they, that you water them really well. So in hindsight, that's probably what I've been doing wrong. Our garden is dry and perhaps I haven't been watering them enough. So I'm very excited to have another go. And a company called Nature First Trees gives us lots more inspiration of what trees to grow in our own garden. And this is a beauty. This is Parotica Persica, um, Persian ironwood, a lovely, lovely tree. And um, one really worth growing, it's a stunning tree. And then also the Acer Grisium. This is one that I have growing at home. I bought it quite small and it's getting big and I just love this tree. And Osmanthus heterophyllus, also known as False Holly. This is a quite a compact tree. And then Figus Slovatica pendula. 
And then this very unusual twitch I'd never seen before, Northophagus Antarctica, also known as Antarctic Beach. I've never seen this before. And then this very tall Easter Campestry or Field Maple. So some inspo there for trees to grow in your garden. And it's very atmospheric being at Chelsea. It is busy, there are lots of crowds, but I quite like it really. It's um, Everyone's very excited to be here and it's a really positive and really good vibe. Um, and the other thing to see is we'll go and have a quick look at the bandstand. So there's this lovely floral display and then um, crowds of people and lots of music playing in the bandstand. So next we'll head round the outdoor exhibits and look at some ways in which you can add a bit of wow to your garden. So we'll begin with um, pots and containers and there's some stunning um, terracotta pots that we saw in all shapes and sizes and various budgets too. Some really nice um, architectural pots. And this is a company um, called Agriframe. So look at these growing supports. These are some useful ones for growing fruit and vegetables up. I'll be quite interested to have my um, peas growing up that. This is a lot better than my current um, setup in my vegetable patch, which I'll show you next week. Um, this looks really good. And this is also quite nice, a way of displaying pots, just sort of hanging them on this um, crisscrossy metal trellis. To add the wow factor to your garden, especially if money is no object, then look no further than this. This is called steel sculptures and some of them are beautiful and they range from the sycamore seed is £6,600 and this ball is £6,000. There's the leaves and um, they are £6,360. So if you've got a bit of money to spend, um, you can certainly create something stunning. Um, perhaps if Mike, if you're watching, perhaps you can make me some of these. <laughs> and another company called Ian Gill Sculpture, they do these um, metal garden structures. Some of them are also include water features as well. So also absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure of the price of these. And more water features here. Aren't they stunning? And this is an artist called Matt Maddox who specialises in hand carved granite sculptures. And this is a company called A Place in the Garden and they specialise in metal garden products. So they've got quite a diverse range of things from these spherical balls which just add structure to the garden. They've come in large and small and here is the um, price list. So you can get a small one for 295 and here they've got water features and I love the way they've got them growing in the, the box hedging. Um, just adds a really good um, focal point to any garden and I love the way they've got them growing with the allium. So the spherical balls repeated again and again and they do lots of other products from garden furniture. This is beautifully laid out, really lovely and I like the finish on this but perhaps tables are a bit common and what your garden really needs is a galloping horse. And look at this, this is by James Doran Webb and he specializes in driftwood animal sculptures and some of them are absolutely fabulous. There's some stags up there um, and this crown and then this structure in the middle is of a dragon just about to take flight and this is destined to fly over to Chicago so it will be coming to a garden in Chicago and some ideas for water features these are I think bronze structures and here's another water feature with um, absolutely beautiful planting underneath these lovely little white geraniums look really dainty and it just reflects the light from the sky it's absolutely lovely and more beautiful planting around this um, David Ar Arbor um, sculpture stand so these are some of his sculptures. They're absolutely beautiful and would make a real center point to any garden. This is a nice one. And I like this ball on, on a mound. That looks really, really good. Perhaps we could do that with all our surplus soil. <laughs> anyway, stunning planting. I don't know who they get to do the planting on this stand, but it's really, really nice.
And now we're going to have a look at garden buildings and boy, there are some fantastic ones to see. And the first company is this company called Hannam and Taylor and they specialise in shepherd's huts. Um, and the planting on this stand was just exquisite, really, really pretty. I love the colours, the purples and the and the oranges and it's very loose and naturalistic planting. And they've got this wicker edging and then in front of it is... Um, this, these cubes, these black cubes are surrounding a fire pit and there's a nice cornice cusa there. Um, and everybody on the stand absolutely loved this. Um, really, really good idea and quite simple and it's easy to do in your own garden. Perhaps not so easy and simple is the addition of this pièce de résistance, the shepherd's hut. Um, Unfortunately, this will set you back 110,000, but this is for all the bells and whistles. And look at this bathroom. I mean, you wouldn't think to have a, a bathroom in a shepherd's hut. And I love these little doors with the little slidey doors. Aren't they cute? Um, but yeah, this is really special and really lovely. And another stand was the Alatex glass houses stand. And some of these glass houses are absolutely exquisite. And the planting too was wonderful. This is um, a very perfect looking vegetable patch. Um, no butterfly damage or anything on these cabbages. And here, this, this stand, oh, this is a lovely idea. This is a butternut squash that's been dried and scooped out and used as a little bird feeder or bird house. Um, and the glass sizes here are, are really lovely. Some of them, They've got these um, shading on them too and the atmosphere inside is just beautiful. Quite nice to have as a, even as a little conservatory if you don't want to use it just purely as a greenhouse. And this is a nice idea. Um, here we've got these gabions supporting just some struts of wood across the top. Um, they make really good little bug hotels. Um, and yeah, and the flooring here was lovely and this is by a company local to us called Westminster Stone. So we'll go along and have a look at their stone in more detail. Some lovely planting as well here. And here we've got a company called Gaze Burville and they specialise in oak outdoor kitchens and furniture. But I've put this here because they also do these lovely oak pergolas. And the stand itself was stunning with lots of um, verbascum and um, sort of peachy colours um, and hollyhocks and um, salvias and lots of lovely lovely planting and they also do um, lovely tables and I like the way that the back wall has been painted black and it makes everything on it really stand out and here's some digitalis and some ferns this is an area for um, a shaded part of the garden planted out with hostas and all shade loving plants and if we swing round onto these um, shelves, so look at these beautiful oak shelves and on them are some lovely things. We've got the little oak leaf with the roots forming and um, here is this lovely oak constructed pergola which would look beautiful in any garden and the furniture looks so comfortable with these nice rounded seats. And for any children or children at heart, this company Blue Forest, the Treehouse people, we do see what they've got to offer. So. We had a chat with the man and he's let us go and have a look inside one of these very special tree houses. So the planting around is absolutely beautiful again. And here you can see this um, green roof, which is covering the Hobbit house, which we'll go into in a bit. So we're up now in the tree house and you can see there's um, just this thought of absolutely everything. There's a little bed, um, there's colouring pens and paper and um, then there's a wardrobe and here there's a little bird house so little birds would nest there and you can watch the um, the bird and then going into the wardrobe you open up the wardrobe and then there's a hole which goes down into a slide and you can slide out Narnia style through the wardrobe and outside and down and above on the ceiling is a little constellation of stars and then a cargo net which you can climb up and sleep over up the top hanging from the ceiling so they've just thought of absolutely everything. It's just stunning. And we'll head now back down the steps and we'll go now and look inside the Hobbit House. So the Hobbit House is adorable as well. It's got this lovely round door and these sweet little lights. And 
above, as I said, we've got this living roof. Um, look how good that looks. But I mean, you can take these ideas and incorporate them into something at, in your own garden. And here we've got a um, popcorn maker um, and a big screen TV. So you can have cinema night in here. And it's just absolutely wonderful. So we've had an amazing day at the Chelsea Flower Show. We've had a wonderful day. We're tired out, so we're going to go and get some dinner. But um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And thank you very much for watching and join us again in the next video. Bye for now.